Hello, this is I Go Travel with Don Barnett. We're heading south of Moab, about a half hour, into uh, one of the big uh, national parks there called Canyonlands. By the way, those holes in the cliff behind me, uh, those are nesting holes made by swallows. The community of Moab in Utah is in the southeastern part of the state. The white line here represents the area of a series of national parks and monuments that is uh, very popular with tourists. Starting up at the north end near Moab, uh, just inside the Colorado border, we made a video on that uh, a great scenery at the Colorado National Monument. And then when you get over the border onto the Utah sign, side near Moab, uh, there are several national parks and monuments. Like I said, the first uh, northern one just north of Moab is Arches. We have a video there. Uh, also, this one will be on Canyon Lands. Uh, the other uh, parks as you go south west towards St. George, Utah, uh, other ones, uh, Capitol Reef, Escalante, Bryce Canyon, and Zion Canyon. And just over the Arizona border on the Arizona side is a very well-known one called the Grand Canyon. This whole series uh, of canyons uh, follow along, uh, have been carved out in large part by the Colorado River. Here we are in Canyonlands National Park. There is one uh, paved road into Canyonlands and uh, you uh, quickly arrive at the Island in the Sky Visitor Center. Uh, the park has roads and trails for biking, hiking, and four-wheeling. Uh, you can rent uh, ATVs and other four-wheel high-clearance vehicles in nearby Moab. There are long hikes and uh, drives in Canyonlands, but I stayed to the easy ones. Uh, these folks uh, will find it easier going up than uh, coming back down again. Here comes somebody, but they're, uh, look here, they're looking, they're, they're using uh, walking poles. They are the smart ones, hiking poles. It really is rugged country. That's a road way down below us. Uh, check with the parks before you take these side roads. And here's some of the erosion features that we saw in places like Arches. Uh, just remarkable, remarkable stuff. The Green River and the Colorado River joined together in Canyonlands National Park and flow southward as the Colorado River. This is the Green River before it flows into the park. The Shoshone Indians called the river Kidiagi. Kidiagi meant Prairie Chicken River. The Spanish named the river Verde, which means green, perhaps due to the green banks uh, and valley that contrasted with the surrounding uh, dry brown valley. The Spanish called the other river Colorado. The word Colorado means uh, a reddish color, perhaps n uh, named after the cliffs and banks along the river. Green River really carves up uh, the land here. We joined this girl for lunch over the Green River, and it is quite an impressive sight. Look how the land has been carved out by that river. We're just upstream from the junction with the Colorado River. Rugged country, but very picturesque. I'll just do one more scan of the whole area. This is a good-sized national park. There are roads down there that you can take. It just gives me a nightmare thinking about falling off those cliffs. I think that that road on the right is the 160 kilometer long White Rim Road that circles the island in the sky, a mesa that we are on. Uh, you can bike it or uh, drive it. 
uh, get a permit at the park office and uh, instructions and supplies. It is a several day trip. Just uh, know where you're going. Here's a guy who spent more than several days exploring the back country. The guy on the right, uh, John Wesley Powell, was the first American to explore the Green and Colorado rivers. He had his arm blown off in the Civil War and later explored the rivers with largely inexperienced oarsmen for three months. His reports drew a national U.S. attention to the area. This area is not just all dry desert without life. Uh, this sagebrush is spotted everywhere. Sagebrush is, is uh, in the uh, sunflower family. Uh, and don't confuse it with cooking sage, which is in the mint family of plants. Early Indians knew how to use sagebrush for medicinal purposes. And this plant knows how to survive in a harsh climate. This looks like a lavender plant in bloom. And I don't know the name of this one, uh, but you don't have to know the name of the plant uh, to appreciate them. The high country uh, desert has quite a variety of plants. I like to uh, get uh, more out of a trip than just uh, nice scenery or pretty pictures. It is the information about the place, the stories about the wildlife or the people who live or have lived there. Whenever I get a chance, to go on a guided tour or listen to local people tell their stories, I'm all ears. Here is a park ranger telling about early pioneer life before Canyonlands became a park. I like to call this a, a journey under the ledge. That is, that is what the cowboys and the ranchers referred to uh, the lower parts of the canyon. They called it the under the ledge. I finally discovered what he meant by under the ledge. There in this one place here, uh, I found a hole between the rocks, kind of those almost steps going between uh, into a little opening. So I uh, walked up through there and uh, out onto this point. And uh, at the point, uh, I looked down. And there it was, the Schaefer Trail ready for any brave kind of a tourist today. When uranium was discovered in the area, the trail was widened and uh, linked up to the White Rim Road where trucks hauled uranium bearing uh, ore out to Moab. You can uh, ride it on the bike or you can uh, drive it. Just keep alert and eyes on the road. The Schaefer Trail is named after a Mormon family who ranched in the area before it became a park. In summer, John Schaefer drove his cattle up the trail to summer pastures on top of the mesa in the area where the park entrance and visitor center is at today. Before winter, he herded his cattle back down the trail, closer to home and in the protection of the canyon below. This historical uh, photo shows a flock of sheep being herded down the trail. I read where uh, sheep uh, probably fell off the trail to their death below, but I doubt it. Here is uh, 1,500 sheep being herded down the street I was at a while ago. Not a single sheep deviated from the herd. That little herd on the Schaefer Trail years ago would have uh, stuck together like glue. Let's uh, watch a few vehicles crawling up and down the trail, which is a one-lane uh, wide dirt road with no guardrails. There are sharp switchbacks, and when you meet another vehicle, someone often has to back up to one of the wider pullouts. There are pullouts frequently along the trail. Uh, vehicles going uphill have the right of way. Advice is to go extremely slow. Keep your eyes in the road. The drop-offs are a one-way street that you will not come back on alive. It takes two or three uh, hours to drive uh, from top to bottom. Uh, 
take extra food and uh, water in case you uh, take longer than anticipated or if you have a breakdown. Some say it is better to rent a four-wheel uh, drive high-clearance vehicle in Moab rather than take your own. And go in good weather. Lots do it. It just might be one of your highlights in life. Canyon Lands is a big park and there's lots to explore. The park has another trail called the 100 Mile Trail on White Rim Road. Depending on where you start, it can be from 72 uh, to 115 kilometers long and will take you uh, at least a couple of days by vehicle and three days or so uh, if you're a good biker. Again, you want to be in a four-wheel uh, drive high-clearance vehicle, uh, either your own or a rented one. Originally, the trail was uh, here was built for exploring for uranium very little of which was ever found. They have run long distances bike uh, races over the White Rim uh, Road. It loops around and below the island in the sky, High Mesa, part of Canyonlands. Getting back to the Schaefer Trail, I was told that it is better for some reason to start at the bottom and drive up to the island in the sky visitor center. If I ever come back into this Moab area, uh, I'd like to do that Schaefer Trail. Either ride a bicycle down it or uh, uh, rent a, a Jeep and drive down it. Well, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, we're rolling on down the trail. Hit the subscribe button and that will alert you when we're uh, putting more videos on the internet. And to find uh, those other videos, uh, like it says in the bottom here, uh, just Google the little at sign, Don Barnett 5090. Hit the word playlists in the middle part of the page and scroll down. Each playlist has several travel videos.